Ah, yes, and now it's time for another episode of Ace's Adventures, Director's Commentary. And now your presenter, Ace. Hi everyone, Anthony here with Aces Adventures, and welcome to episode one of my director's commentary on previous videos. This is something that I've thought about doing for quite a long time, and something that you guys had encouraged me to do, and I figured now was the perfect time to do so, given the current circumstances, uh, with all of the malls being closed at the current moment. So hopefully that doesn't last, but i um, going to keep these pretty up upbeat, and uh, just give you guys um, some information about what I recollect about going to this property, uh, some behind the scenes information and, uh, just kind of hang out and talk about stuff about, uh, about the malls and whatnot. So, um, this is the Summit Place Mall in Pontiac, Michigan. And, uh, as of the recording of this and, and for a while now, um, this property is 100% completely gone. Um, this was demolished rather rapidly, uh, late last year. And it stinks because I really wanted to get back to this place, uh, one more time and uh, and, and film it again, but uh, unfortunately didn't get a chance to. Um, the first time that I was there, we uh, as you'll as I'll explain in a minute, did not get to spend as much time in there as I wanted to. And um, this property was one of the favoriteest properties I ever visited in all of my years of filming malls. This is, you know, there are different levels of these malls and there are ones that are like open malls that are dead but are not really that aesthetically driven there are ones that are open malls that are very much aesthetically driven like the concord mall and then you have ones that are abandoned that are still pretty cool um but not a whole lot going on and then you have class four or class a really uh, these mega malls that are abandoned and have so many cool leftover features from their heyday and were never really updated in, in recent times. So as you can see now, we are walking through the uh, the picnic food court. This was such an amazing place to see. Um, so much history in this place, so much aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetically driven images. I love the teals and, and, and the wood and, and, the, and the tile on the floor uh, in this food court. Um, and this place was sealed up pretty good. I'm going to get into it. Get, I'm going to get into it and give you guys some uh, never before heard information about how we got into this mall. Um, I love this hot sticks place. But yeah, this place had almost no graffiti in it at all, which you, you'll see, and which is such was such a welcome sight um, to see that it wasn't vandalized uh, hardly at all. Um, nature was just running its course. There was a lot of mold in here, a lot, a lot of mold. And um, this was a place that I'm definitely glad that I got to see. So, um, we're going to talk about a lot of things in these videos, and one of the things I'm going to tell you about is how I got into this property. So, in the four years next month, four-year anniversary of the channel, I have never once physically broken into a mall to see a property. I've never physically done that. Um, I've been incredibly lucky to find ways to sneak in, and even though I realize technically in some places you may be considered trespassing, it's a risk you have to take. Uh, I am a law-abiding citizen, I have no criminal record, and I was strictly only there to document the places and do nothing else, not damage them in any way. Um, as you guys probably already know, that. that's the last thing I would ever want to do is uh, hurt one of these properties. If I was rich and I had millions and billions and trillions of dollars, I would buy these properties and I would revitalize them and then I would keep their aesthetically driven features while still adding modern storefronts or, or adding modern retailers. Um, I would make it a clause that if you were to open a mall or open a store in one of my malls that you would have to use... Um, 
I wouldn't necessarily say it had to be vintage, but it would have to be an aesthetically driven, interesting storefront. No plain whites and grays. It'd have to be something that had some taste to it. And I think that that actually would work well. I think that we got away from that, and that was one of the minor things that may have hurt them all, um, is they're just they're not really that great looking anymore, for the most part. They're so boring. It's just, I swear these companies nowadays, for the most part, not all of them, just put up four boxes and four doors and windows or whatever and it's like all right here you go you, you can shop in this boring ass mall so um but anyways going off on a tangent uh, i want to tell you guys about how we got into this property um so we drove out to this place um my buddy nick and i who i miss dearly but unfortunately we're not we're not talking very much right now i would love for that to change he's such an uh, amazingly talented musician he's uh the uh creator of the synthwave group betamax uh, please go support him on uh, on Bandcamp, he has an amazing album that he just put out recently. Such a talented, talented person, regardless of whether or not uh, we're talking right now. So me and Nick drove out to this place. Um, like I said, I think summer 2016 it was. We did a lot of, we had a lot of heavy hits, uh, a lot of successful malls, big name malls, and early on in the career in my career of YouTube. And we did a perimeter walk of this property at night just to scope it out and look for points of entry to see some place we could slip in and did not find anything. So when I say we never break into a mall, I, I really truly meant that. Um, and the most thing that I would ever be willing to do is pretty much what we had to do for this mall. So there was a board, uh, there was a board near the food court that was, it was loose. And so we undid two screws uh, to slide in underneath the board. And then when we left, we uh, put the screws back and actually tightened all of the screws to make sure it was secure. So Call it what you want, you know, we respect these places 100%, and uh, we were all the way in Michigan and didn't want to leave without getting inside, so that's the only thing that I could think of to, to do uh, without causing any physical damage to the property, so uh, that's something that nobody's ever known before, but that's what happened. So uh, this exploration actually got cut short, so you're going to see in a little bit, I don't think it's coming up just yet, we were walking and all of a sudden noticed that there was a power strip on the floor and it was running up to some kind of a long cord. And I can't be for sure, but what we think it was was some kind of a motion sensor. And as soon as we saw that, I alerted my buddy, and again, this was when we really just first started doing it, so I was quite a bit uh, more nervous uh, than I usually am now in most places. I still have some nerves. Um, but uh, so we uh, quickly got out of there, you know, uh, boarded the door back up real quick, I was, you know, screwed up real quick, and then uh, going to our, went to our car and, and got the heck out of there. So that was the story of what happened at Summit Place Mall. Um, like I said, I did plan to go back out to this mall. I just never got around to it. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. And it, it's really expensive to travel all the time and film all these places. I, I wish some people realized just how expensive it really is. And for people that think that I make tons of money on YouTube, trust me, I definitely do not. Uh, smaller creators are lucky to uh, make a couple hundred bucks a month off of YouTube. And especially me, um, it's my own fault partially too, because, um, um, half of my music is copyrighted that I put in here, but whatever, you know, it's uh, just, it comes with the territory. So uh, you can see here as we are making our way through the property here, you can see how there is no graffiti, there is almost no vandalism, and there are just uh, a lot of signs of natural decay. Um, and for some weird reason, this, this uh, cookie bakery store here, they had the, um, the logo uh, like garbage bag off and covered up. I don't know if that's a legality, if that has been like that since the mall at that point was still open and, and failing, but you can see all the storefronts uh, are covered up with some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of a trash bag. So, um, what else? So this mall had uh, a couple amazing vintage storefronts. Uh, had a pretty cool old Deb, which is not super rare, but then uh, it had a extremely, extremely rare, which I think you're going to see here in a minute. I can't remember the exact timing. Uh, had a casual corner uh, storefront that looked damn near untouched from, I'd have to say, mid 80s. Um, by the way, uh, just to interject, you see that cord along the right side of the screen there? That is that's where we saw. I think I panned back over to it if I remember correctly. That is where we think we saw the motion detector. And if anybody knows, if anybody of you are in the security field and know if that's what that is, uh, let me know if we were crazy for thinking that. But you can see right there, there's something plugged in, 
And <laughs> I kind of stopped and looked at Nick. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, you know, we probably should get out of here because that was it was blinking. And then we heard a beeping sound shortly thereafter. Um, what else? So as you're going to see here in a second also, and I have mentioned already, this property is one of the moldiest properties I have seen top five in terms of mold. Uh, a lot of extreme, extreme water damage and mold, probably asbestos. Um, if you go into these places anywhere in the country and, you know, want to do what I do, obviously I'm going to tell you not to do that because it's not safe. But please, for the love of God, uh, on a, an ironic sense of what's going on now, please use a respirator. Please, please do not go into this place uh, without a respirator. Um, you can see right there in that shot there along the wall, black mold is hazardous and deadly to your health. So I didn't even go in that storefront because of that, even with a respirator on. So, um, so you can see here just the natural decay and it's a sad, this place is demolished. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I wish I could have gotten into this place one more time, but unfortunately, um, it, you know, it wasn't, wasn't meant to be. And I believe, yes, I'm pretty sure, almost positive that we are coming, uh, to the, um, the casual corner, which I was mentioning. One of the, one of my top 10 storefronts that I've ever seen, uh, in a mall property. So hopefully you guys, uh, you know, enjoy this episode. Let me know what you think of this format with me rambling on here. I, I personally, myself, even though you guys say you don't mind, I don't like talking too much. Um, it's difficult for me to do that, uh, especially missing my two front teeth from, uh, when I got smoked in the face playing hockey almost four years ago now. Um, so it's difficult to speak for a long time, but I'm doing my best to get through it. So hopefully you guys, um, don't mind my voice and can, um, T you know, deal with me talking for 15 minutes or so. And as you can see here, uh, as we wrap up the video here in just a few minutes, this is the casual corner that I was talking about, this amazing wooden storefront, uh, and definitely was not uh, ever updated, I don't think. And this end of the mall, there was some really, really heavy uh, natural uh, decay and uh, damage. Um, it's kind of funny, too, that big, huge pinball mach or uh, gumball machine is there, too. But this place was, you know, kind of like Northridge, how Northridge used to be, where it was, um, where it was kept intact, uh, and was never really, really messed with all that much. So, um, before I get out of here in just a few minutes, uh, please make sure that, uh, you are following me on Instagram and Twitter at Aces Adventures One. That's where I post a lot of comments, uh, pictures, interact with you folks. If you do not have Instagram, please, please, please go and follow me on Instagram right now at Aces Adventures One because, uh, every few days, especially with what's going on right now and having tons of free time, uh, I am going live on Instagram and there is a feature where I can actually pull you up on screen with me and we can chat live kind of like a talk show. So I would love to meet more of my fans and followers and chat with you guys and uh, just kind of be a, a voice of reason in these uh, crazy times that we're going through. I hope that uh, life gets back to soon fairly normal, at least on a somewhat regular basis. And uh, we are all not uh, quarantined in the house because it's been uh, it's been pretty rough. Um, if you want to support me, I'm going to mention it. I don't care if you like it or not. I'm just going to mention it. You can follow, you can support me on Patreon at patreoncom adventures. Um, my my PayPal address is acesadventures1 at gmail.com. Uh, any support now more than ever does help, as I am one of the many people uh, who have lost all of their jobs. All three of my jobs uh, are currently. Uh, uh, one laid off, one I can't do because of safety reasons with being an Uber driver, and uh, my DJ income is is for not with the uh, schools being closed. So anything helps out. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so, so much for listening to me ramble. Um, this is Anthony with Aces Adventures. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll, be back. we'll see you next week with more of Aces Adventures Director's Commentary. This has been another episode of Aces Adventures Director's Commentary. Oh, no, Joe. What are you doing down there? Damn you, Karen. We're going to be late for rugby at the spa. Oh, anyway, thanks for joining, everyone. We'll see you next time on Aces Adventures Director's Commentary.